Why right, we're back. The vote got cut off for some reason. Well, not for some reason. I ran out of disk space. So it stopped recording, even though OBS said it was still recording. And I just continued talking, talking, talking. And yeah, sucks. So the rest of the game, I've seen it, you know. Uh, usually I do these vote reviews not uh, seeing these games. So the rest of the, the game, I have seen it. Full disclosure. Something that I want to talk about is... You know, at this point in time, this is where the big problem of Ezreal falls in. Uh, Ezreal can maybe do something around mid or do something whatever Sejuani isn't, but Sejuani is so much stronger than, and much more useful than Ezreal at this point. In mid lane, if Sejuani was around mid, they would most likely win 2v2. So, uh, Ezreal has, uh, like, if maybe Syndra flashes some spells and then they kill the Sejuani, maybe that's a possibility. I think Syndra and Ezreal is probably the best bet in terms of 2v2. But uh, Ezreal matching here is uh, an impossibility. Ezreal is way too weak at this point. Ezreal as a jungler is uh, is very, very weak. The only play for C9 here is to give up the bot lane. And if you're ever in a situation where that is the case, then uh, you're going to have a tough time. The main thing is, you know, if, if you have Cho'Gat and Syndra, you have two pushing lanes and you got Ezreal. I'm assuming the idea is that you will punish the enemy jungler. Uh, which would be the case if uh, C9 didn't gank, die to that early gank, right? So Ezreal has a pick. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sold. I think it works very similar to a lot of other jungle picks. But the main difference is I feel like with Ezreal, he doesn't farm too fast. If you compare it to maybe Nidalee, he doesn't farm uh, as fast as her. And uh, that could be like a problem for Ezreal. But the main thing is, you know, if if you have Chogat and Syndra, maybe you can punish the Sejuani. Uh, maybe you can create something like that, and uh, I think that is a valid kind of uh, situation to put yourself in, right? So we continue on, right? This is eventually going to happen because, uh, like the C9 bot lanes, sure they have strong champs for it, but uh, Sejuani is just much more useful in these situations. All right, uh, very important here, direwolves. They um, uh, when they did the play on bottom, Chogat gets priority in top lane. And uh, when Choga gets priority on top lane, then he's going to be the first one into mid lane. And when he's the one first into mid lane, then he needs some teammates here. He needs to either give it up. Keep in mind that Ezreal and Syndra have been doing work at the star for a very long time now. They were doing it during the entire time while um, Dyros were forcing into bottom. The play for C9 would be to just rotate into mid lane with four and then just try to bait out their play into bottom, right? Uh, which means that uh, uh, this is a situation where Vladimir needs to either l leave the turret or Ash and Alistar just walk into mid and defend mid and then Vladimir bases and walks into top. Uh, that would be the optimal play, I would think. Clown get a mid tower. It's a good trade. Situation where our rivals are up in top lane. They're going to do Rift Herald most likely. Uh, and then C9 should be doing the Drake as the trade. Go aiming for second tower bottom, I think, is a waste of time. I think Jarvan can just clear the way very easily. Uh, Direwolves have uh, a massive amount of priority here, though, because they had uh, Ash and Alistar up top lane while Vladimir was uh, was dying in mid. Because C9 bot lane was killing mid tower while Ash and Alistar were pushing top, so they have priority, right? Then they did the Rift Herald, they also have priority. Their rotation into mid is very, very good here. That what they should look for here is to cut off the C9 bot lane and C9 jungler to come into mid lane with a good path, meaning they have to go all the way around. And during this time, uh, Dio should pick up the mid tower with the help of Rift Herald. I think the play from Destiny here is, is pretty good, but uh, they overcommit big time, right? So if we take a step back right here, we can spot uh, the Rakan that is coming in. He's pretty free right here. He has no flash, no nothing. We can even see where Sejuani turns on him. Destiny, forcing the flash on Syndra, I think was a fine play right here. Oh, it wasn't even a flash, pardon me. It wasn't a flash, my bad. Uh, trying to W the Syndra was completely fine, but then he should walk away and his team should continue to hit the turret. They could even turn on the Rakan here because Sejuani has contact with the Rakan. Sejuani has full contact with Rakan and um, he doesn't get punished at all. Very, very weak play from Dyrols. Good idea from Destiny to zone Syndra off the tower, but what you want to look for in these situations is, is Syndra under the tower? 
Uh, yes, okay, then we can dive her. If she's not, okay, hit the turret. She was under her second turret. She was far away, she wasn't clearing any minions. You could just pick up the free mid turret and then walk away and be in a very healthy state of the game without losing three good men. Alright. We move on. Destiny. He was the one who flashed, not Jensen. My bad. Okay, we move on. At this point in time, Diables have a composition that uh, are very strong in team fights. There's a big problem with the fact that Jensen doesn't have uh, cleanse. He doesn't have cleanse at all. And uh, more and more uh, as we proceed in the game, uh, since he's the one that is going to be wave clearing against the Ash, the Sejuani, and the Alistar, he's going to be under a lot of threat. Uh, Flash is a tool to get away from the engages, but cleanse is also one heal. I don't think it's helpful at all. I think it's fine for the Vladimir matchup, you know. It's uh, probably one of the strongest summoners in lane and in 2v2 because you can heal two people, right? But um, in this game, I don't think it's worth it. You know, I think cleanse is pretty, pretty juicy. The main thing here is um, uh, you want to play a 3-1-1 uh, and uh, Diabos want to play a 1-3-1 where they force on mid lane and uh, Vladimir goes off on side and then they take uh, control through river with 3 in mid. Which will be very easy to do now because Syndra doesn't have cleanse. So maybe C9, uh, the only thing they can do is uh, try to send Syndra off to a side lane and then contest uh, mid lane with uh, the QSS of Kalista that she's buying very, very soon. But even that is suboptimal, right? So I think Diavol's composition do have an advantage at this point uh, in terms of team fighting. Uh, and we will see how it goes. That doesn't go to say right, C9 still have the Kalista Rakan. Uh, they still can pull off very, very mean compositions and they can pick people off. Jensen is the first one to go here. He's the one stuck in mid lane. He's going to get engaged on. It's very easy to engage on him uh, with direwolves picks, right? Which makes it very hard for him to wave clear at all. Makes it very, very uh, tricky for C9. So their play, their play is to try to just group as four, I think, at this point. You know, group as four, get priority as four, and then take mid midway priority, and then play it like that. Banshee's Veil is going to be a very strong item for Jensen, right? Because it's hard for Diables to break, break the Banshee's Veil. Maybe they can do it with a the volley. They could do it with Alistair combo, right? But... Uh, Generally speaking, it's hard to break um, break the Banshee's Veil of uh, Syndra without committing a lot of resources, right? So this is uh, going to be a good buy for Jensen. Now we got Syndra up top lane. We had uh, three in mid. Javan just farming a wave. We don't need to talk about the top lane uh, matchup too much. Uh, I don't think it's uh, too relevant at this point in the game. Both have TP and the main part of the game is um, uh, what the other four do. Right now, C9 are playing 3 in mid. We see a situation where C9 go for the group. Diavolves currently are playing it very safe, which is good, right? They can't contest this mid wave. They should just patiently wait for Vladimir to push out and then try to punish C9 on, the, on them walking up to the turret here. They're walking up to the turret. All right, Vladimir is coming in from an angle. This should be a very positive fight, looking at it. They got Jensen. It's, uh, uh, Jarvan is a bit too far behind. He should have been walking forward a bit more. He was stopping up a bit too much. Vladimir gets one shot, which is a big fucking problem. Let's take a look again. Like, they got the target they wanted, right? It was a, it was a very clean ultimate. Here, Vladimir needs to flash. He needs to flash ult on top of this pile of people, E pool, which you kind of ha hope that a player can do at this uh, kind of caliber of gameplay. This is worth playing, right? This is supposed to be top 20 in the world, you know? So you gotta, you gotta ult and then pull in, you know? Of course, it's not top 20 world. I know if uh, uh, all the Korean teams are better than them, I'm not saying they're top 20 in the world. Uh, don't, don't kill me, all right? Don't kill me. But de definitely, Vladimir should be flashing, ulting, E, pooling, and then you would have a juicy team fight here. Java should have been walking up more, and uh, it would have been a better situation, because Jensen got 
he got clipped by the Sejuani ultimate. And I think Vladimir kind of broke the game there because it could have been the thing that uh, won them the game. C9 though, their, uh, their comp is hanging on the ropes, you know, they're doing the, the most out of it. They just want to kite, kite, kite and extend uh, the duration of the fight for as long as possible. If they survive the initial engagement of direwolves, then they will win the fight because they have a shit ton of DPS. They can just bust out and, uh, you know, looking at direwolves' composition, they, they are more about that burst and more about that just clumping them up and uh, uh, catching people and shutting them down instantly. If um, if of course C9 survived their cooldowns, then the situation will be much harder. So this situation is very important right here because at this point in time, you know, Diavols uh, can play it in a way where they can go forth through mid, get priority through mid, and then walk into river, maintain river control, send Vladimir up to uh, push out top wave, and then just constantly force team fights because that's what you want to do, right? With these picks, you just want to constantly force team fights because eventually Ezreal is going to get too strong, uh, Kalista is going to get stronger and stronger. Ash, of course, scales well too uh, compared to Kalista, but the longer this game goes on, I feel like um, the, the 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 picks of C9 are going to be better. Diables, on the other hand, you know, uh, they don't scale bad at all. Uh, I, I don't want to say that either, but um, looking at Diables, what they want to do is uh, being the ones pressuring the Nash, pressuring the side lane, because C9 uh, have to be the ones, uh, of course, uh, grouping up, because no one can really deal convincingly with Vladimir. So the problem with what Diables are doing here is they want to be right here, they want to be chilling right here, while Vladimir is pushing up top, and uh, claiming the top wave, they should, they should just hide in fog. Hide in fog. Right now, hide in fog right here. In a case where the enemy team commits on them, Vladimir just walks up into the river, groups up with this team very easily and smoothly. They need to give up the next upcoming mid-wave. That is the sacrifice that you're giving up here for Vladimir clearing the wave. Because right now he's showing, right? Right now he's showing... C9 is grouped, they have nothing to fear, right? Because Cho'Gat pushed in, he's in position to TP, they have eyes on Jarvan, they have eyes on Vladimir, the situation here is going to be 4v3 no matter what, right? Or 4v5 if uh, top lane is decide to TP with a very late Vladimir. So C9 make the judgment call with the information they have to just commit on it. Right now, Direwolves are taking massive risks when in reality, they should be standing here playing towards top side. When Vladimir clears the wave, they group up again and then walk up a river. They have the river control and then walk into mid again and then they either commit and force a fight if c9 force on the wave or they just clear the wave and c9 will be forced to back off and clear the top wave that it will be stacking because of what vladimir did right so in this case uh, big mistakes big, big mistake from from the diables right we move on okay I'm so pissed that I ran out of disk space. I can't believe it. You know? We continue. We continue. Alright. So once again, Diables uh, should look to play the game very similarly as before. Uh, right now, we had a situation where they grouped up as 4 in mid. Very good. You always want to group up in mid to retake river control. They don't have control of river, so Vladimir can't just walk up straight, right? So they're walking through mid as four, taking mid priority, and then clearing the vision. Syndra is showing up top. They are uh, punishing the play from C9. They get river control right here. Vladimir is going to walk up top to, um, of course, um, clear the wave. And while this happens... You want to make sure that you chill in the river. You chill in the river, you chill right here, and you wait. Instead, Diables decide to fap around a bit. They're just running around in circles because looking at them, what are they really doing? You know, what are they really, really doing? Yeah, they're just running around back and forth on the ward. Smoothie is taking a massive risk by clearing this ward because in reality, Diables should be just sitting here. 
they should just be sitting here. They got the midway priority. They don't need to risk anything. Chogar is coming in first. He has uh, some kind of priority, but Jarvan, of course, has TP. But right now, the big issue is that Direwolves uh, went into a bad position right here, when in reality, they should have been at an angle where they could group up easily with Vladimir. I don't know what Alistair is waiting for with his combo. Right here, he should just be comboing the Rakan. They should be hitting the Rakan. Uh, Alistair is trolling a bit. He's knocking away contracts. Destiny, uh, like Alistair, was really, really hinting it here. Here as well, Ash. I don't even know what Ash took damage from Ezreal. Ezreal, yeah, took full damage from Ezreal. Alright. Alright. Arrow hit on Sneaky as Q says. Yeah. So Alistair was, was not playing that team fight good. Ash still has both summoners. Vladimir is also very f far up top. The position was just bad. C9 are just executing better. Way, way better. So once again, big mistake. You know, Vladimir is clearing top wave. Be in position where Vladimir can group up with you easily or give up the space. You know, in this case, you either stand here so Vlad can group with you. Or you just give up the space, let them take the space, force Vladimir to walk around, you know. Because the beauty of standing in this area after you got mid priority, you know, Diables played it very good. Went four into mid, got river control, sent Vladimir into top to clear the wave. They can't maintain river control while the enemy team is clearing the mid wave. And then they will have lose priority on next mid wave, but they maintain river control throughout, right? Which is a, an optimal play. And this will force c9 in situations where they team fight and when they team fight 5v5 it should be like the, the odds should be better for diables than doing whatever the hell they're doing now right so props for them that they, they went four into mid c9 definitely punished their mistake very good smoothie has a very good eye for when he should commit and when he should get in go in alistair could have played this better ash could have played it a lot better uh, vladimir didn't ult anything yet he just pulled now, like, he still didn't ult. Like, his his ult is, is bugged, maybe. Maybe it's bugged. Yeah. Okay. So, Nash uh, means game. Definitely means game. Uh, C9 uh, are going to take this home. So, while this rolls, you know, usually... Usually, I do these reviews not knowing what is happening, you know? Not knowing what happened, not knowing the outcome. Uh, just... Uh, just doing it from a fresh perspective where I see it and take it as it comes. But my, my PC just went boom, you know. I ran out of disk space when I was recording this. And uh, that uh, makes me very, very sad. So to kind of um, sum up this game, something that we should look out for with C9 is their inability to... Uh, or uh, Smoothie is very rarely playing around mid. I'm pretty sure his mid proximity is very very low if you play against a team like g2 and they are very very good at playing through mid with uh, their support then they will run into a lot of problems jensen is a player that deserves more attention and playing the 3v3 in mid is very very important and when i see 3v3 i mean mid support jungle right uh very very important mythy is very very good at pressuring around mid and if they play against a team you know that is what the meta is you know pressuring around mid uh if, if they play against a team that um does that uh, very good then they will run into a lot of problems a lot of lot of problems so this is something that c9 should look out for the second thing is giving up Callista when there's not tristana in the picture i think is horrible i think you can argue for tristana into Callista and maybe kogma into Callista, but generally speaking i think it's not worth it Callista right now in the current state of the game she has too many good supports that she can play with and I don't, I, I don't like that uh, aspect uh, of the game at all. When you give up Kalista for a Jarvan on red side, sure you have Jarvan flex, which is fancy and all, but you can just blind Chogat and always be fine top. So there's nothing to be scared about, you know. Oh, they pick Nar into Chogat. Oh, the blasphemy. No, it doesn't really matter, you know. Chogat, if Chogat is banned, maybe Jarvan flex is better, but, but uh, uh, most likely not. You know, they could also, if Chogat is banned, they could just blind Nar as well and be fine against Jarvan. There's a lot of options. Uh, for top lane if uh, Jarvan is, is in the picture. Yeah, Diavolves uh, screwed up how they played their late game. Uh, they did some good things. I think Shurnfire deserves some credit. I think C9 as well could have avoided a lot of these ganks. Maybe it was a bit cocky. Ezreal 
Maybe it would have paid off better if Sejuani didn't get that kill in bot lane and he actually invaded the red buff and was on time and harassed the Sejuani, used the Cho'Gat uh, push top lane, used the Syndra push in mid lane to actually punish Sejuani and come out ahead. Maybe Ezreal would have been a way more useful pick. The danger of Ezreal, I feel, is he farms pretty slow, he farms um, Raptors pretty slow, and uh, that is a big problem if you have a jungler like this. It's um, kind of an all-or-nothing kind of thing where you commit on the idea that you need to punish uh, enemy team. Of course, against the enemy team's picks in team fights, Ezreal is uh, very, very good because you can dodge most of these abilities. Direwolves rely on the fact that they latch onto you and then kill you with chain CCs and engages, and doing that on Ezreal is very, very hard. So the reasoning for Ezreal is very understandable. But personally, I'm not too big of a fan. I think uh, you commit a lot of eggs into one basket. I think you can do very similar things with the Gragas, for example. Uh, and you can disengage and you can do uh, a lot of these things. And I just think that is like a safer approach to the game. But I can see the reasonings behind Ezreal. I think if Ezreal falls behind, uh, it's a very difficult game to bounce back from because he farms very slow. And jungle catch-up experience, even though Ezreal gets experience, it doesn't really... Uh, like, he, he needs items, you know. He needs his Trinity Force, he needs, he needs items to be uh, very useful. And being ahead on Ezreal is very, very juicy and all. And I think he had the tools to become ahead in this game. So maybe it would pan out differently if the C9 bot lane didn't die to that Sejuani gank over and over. Alright, I think that settles it. I'm going to piece these two things together. I'm just going to let this roll out. Hopefully this time around it worked. Uh, I'm going to do some other games some other time. Uh, thank you very much and peace. See you guys next time.